You guys keep asking me questions about DaVinci Resolve 17. Is it better than Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro? Is it really free? What makes it so good? So I felt like I have to make this video because some of you seem to have some doubts about how good it is and I get it. So today I'll tell you why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve and why I never looked back, not even once. And just so you know, I'm not getting paid to make this video. I don't even get free stuff. I wish. So good to see you all again guys, I hope you're all doing well and I also hope that the weather where you live is a lot better than over here because it seems like here in Belgium summer's officially over. Today you can't see it, the sun is trying but hmm, I don't think so. But at least I hope that the rain will finally stop because I want to go shoot outside, I feel like I've been locked up in here with my camera for weeks now. So fingers crossed. But anyway, back on topic. DaVinci Resolve 17, that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, look, in my videos, I never tried to sell you something by saying, this is the best product, it's better than everything else, and if you don't buy it, you're stupid. I never do that. I tell you why I like something, and why I bought something, why I use it, and then I leave it up to you, because just because I like it doesn't mean that you're gonna like it, or that it suits your workflow and your style of shooting. But all that being said, in this case, DaVinci Resolve 17, I am gonna say it, you have to try it, at least once. Just try it out, because it's free. And that's the first important thing about DaVinci Resolve 17, it's free. Now, a lot of times, free software means a trial period, you know? It's free for 30 days and that's it. But not DaVinci Resolve, there is no trial period. Of course, there are small restrictions, you can't use some of the more advanced functions and features, but I've used the free version for more than a year and I never needed those advanced features and functions. And even now that I upgraded to the studio version, the paid version, I only used those advanced features maybe one or two times. The main reason why I upgraded to the studio version is because the free version doesn't support 10-bit 422 files. So in the free version, you can drop 10-bit 422 files on the timeline and start editing. You have to transcode them first to ProRes, for example. And that takes time. So if you work a lot with 10-bit 422, then you're gonna have to get the studio version. But also here, DaVinci Resolve is different from all the other editing programs, because it's not subscription based. You pay once and it's for a lifetime license. That's pretty cool, right? So there's not really a reason not to give it a try. And in my humble opinion, it's the best free editor out there. Not one of the best, the best. Because you get so much, including all the color correction tools and features that you could ever wish for. It's a professional editing program, it's full on pro stuff. Even the free version. Virgin. Version. I had that problem before. <laughs> and it's also super stable, especially version... <laughs> version 17. But I have to say... It depends very much on the machine you're working on, your, your computer, the operating system. Because when I was using Premiere Pro, it crashed all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean multiple times a day. It was so annoying. And that's the reason why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. But a lot of people don't have that problem with Premiere Pro. So I can't say for sure what's gonna happen when you're gonna start using DaVinci Resolve. You're gonna have to try it out. I started with DaVinci Resolve 16 a little over a year ago and 16 did crash. Not as much as Premiere Pro, let's say once a week, once every two weeks. But now DaVinci Resolve 17, I've been using it for a while and it only crashed once when I was using a third party plugin. That's it. But again, it's something that you're gonna have to try for yourself. I also find it very intuitive, very easy to get used to. Of course, there is a learning curve, especially when you're just starting out. And if you've been using Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro for years, then it probably will take a little bit longer to get the Fingerspitzengefühl, you know what I mean? That's not even Dutch, that's German. What am I doing? Fingerspitzengefühl. At least, I think it's a real German word. Just let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm making up stuff here, but I don't think so. Anyway, 
it just works and it does everything. And that for me is one of the main selling points, even though it's not really a selling point because it's free. So I love that I have everything I need in one program. I don't need any other plugins or switch between apps. There's the quick cut page, then the normal editing page, obviously, but then also the fusion page to create some visual effects, the color grading page and audio, it's all there. Now, the fusion page and also the color page, it works with nodes. And I have to say, you have to get used to it. In the color page, it takes a few weeks and then you're used to it. In the fusion page, to create some visual effects, it will take a little bit longer because it's more difficult. But once you get the hang of that node workflow, I'm sure you're gonna love it. I know I love it. And color grading in DaVinci Resolve is next level. It really is next level. It's what professional colorists use all over the world. It beats Premiere, it beats Final Cut Pro. I've made quite a few color grading videos now showing you the basics. And the great thing is that most of you, including myself, we only need to know the basics because you can create so many cool things with just the basics. And then, like I said, you can do your color adjustments or your audio adjustments and you can just switch between the tabs. Everything is there. When you do audio adjustments, you will see it in the editing tab and you can still do some small adjustments in the editing tab. It all just works and it's so smooth. For me, as a solo filmmaker, a content creator, it's almost perfect. But of course, it's not. It's not perfect. If I have to mention one downside, a negative, and that means that it could be a negative for you. For me, it isn't at the moment, but if you use a lot of third-party plugins, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, they have a ton. DaVinci Resolve, there's not that many good ones yet for specific visual effects and things like that. But on the other hand, I feel like DaVinci Resolve is getting more and more popular and more and more creators and filmmakers are switching to DaVinci Resolve. So I think in the future, we're gonna see a lot of good plugins for DaVinci Resolve too. I honestly think that DaVinci Resolve 17 is the best editing program for solo filmmakers, especially when you're starting out because it's free. And again, that free version has everything you'll ever need, especially in the first year of your filmmaking journey. And it's also not like you're using some mediocre free program, because usually the free programs, free editing programs are kind of mediocre. And then when you get a little bit more pro, you feel like you're gonna have to switch to another one, to Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. But with DaVinci Resolve, you're already starting in a super professional editing environment for free. And that's what most people don't realize when they hear that it's free. They think that it's like a mediocre kind of thing and then they're gonna have to upgrade eventually. But that's not true. So that's why for me, if you're a content creator, YouTuber, solo filmmaker, just try it out. But of course, just like everything else in the filmmaking YouTube community, it's all very subjective. So if you don't like DaVinci Resolve, then I'd like to know why. Just let me know in the comments because I might have overlooked a few things. Like I said, just because it's perfect for me doesn't mean that it's perfect for everyone. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one, guys.